putting us back up on this tour if anybody has any issues uh, while they're down below need to come back up early or including medical or anything else uh, check with Herb he'll make arrangements to uh, uh, take care of whatever it is so uh, uh, anyway that out of the way uh, you're welcome take all the pictures that you wish the uh, site has been uh, totally unclassified uh, except for one thing which I'll mention during the tour and that and um, so anyway uh, I want to point out a few things up on the surface here before we head down uh, if you notice the Christmas tree like antenna that was out by the parking lot uh, think about what would happen if that uh, if there was to be an incoming enemy missile that, uh, uh, or enemy warhead that came in any place close by. Uh, that would be destroyed instantly. So, uh, there is a hardened backup for that antenna, which is the one over on the far side sticking out of the silo over there. Uh, the primary antenna for the site was uh, the one on the dairy structure here. The, back, the hardened backup for that one is the one sticking out of the silo uh, just in front of it here. In fact, that was so important. There was a second backup, which is the uh, silo over here with the uh, yellow and black striping around it. So uh, there was two backups for that one. The little cone-shaped device over there was a uh, UHF antenna for communications with aircraft. The uh, uh, spherical device right here, the real one is buried 10 feet below the surface there. That is a uh, super low frequency antenna that uh, can communicate uh, with radio waves coming through the ground. This is the same principle as the uh, is used to communicate with the uh, submarines when they're submerged so that was another uh, type of antenna so there was uh, the primary antennas and the backup antennas for each of these communication systems the uh, two scoops over there are tipsies which uh, the video did not mention the video mentioned the ones around the silo as protection for the silo but uh, these had an equally important uh, job they protected uh, what is now there by the yellow band uh, which are air conditionings now but when this site was operational that was uh, basically just a 30 inch 36 inch steel crate that uh, sat there but the uh, grate was over the air intake shaft for the uh, launch control center and that also was to serve as the emergency escape route for the crew if a uh, entry portal which will be going down was to be destroyed so uh, it was very important to have that set of tipsies as uh, they protected against any uh, intrusion in that area, the possibility of dumping some toxic substance into the air shaft or anything of that nature. One other point I want to make before we uh, head down, uh, the crew from Davis Montham, the uh, crews from Davis Montham would arrive at the gate over here. They would make the first of the four phone calls from that gate. The uh, thing not mentioned in the video was that the crew then had uh, three minutes from the time that phone call was made uh, to open the gate, uh, bring their vehicle in to the top of the entry portal here, uh, and uh, make and the commander make his way down to the first uh, first flight of stairs down the concrete stairs that will go down and there was a second phone there 
he would make the uh, second phone call there. The third phone call where he gave the code of the day would be just inside the steel door we'll go through. And then the fourth phone call is down at the bottom. If the uh, crew did not make that uh, second phone call in the three minute time frame because of uh, some security concern or uh, perhaps a rattlesnake setting down at the bottom of the uh, first flight of stairs, uh, some reason like that, uh, the uh, site would be locked down uh, security would be called uh, when security police arrived here uh, in uh, probably no more than 20 minutes. Uh, the crew would find themselves uh, face down on the gravel with M16s pointed at them uh, until they have been adequately identified and because of the uh, security uh, violation uh, determined. We'll now head down to the um, uh, last dock area and uh, if anybody needs to go down on the elevator Herb will bring you down on the elevator please follow me as we go down the steps Please be aware that at the bottom of this first flight of stairs that there is a step down, step up, and uh, please make use of the handrail as we're going down. seen many rattlesnakes lately? Uh, fortunately, we don't see too many. Good. But uh, uh, there are warnings on both yeah, sides I of see the him, door yeah. uh, to remind the crew because the rattlesnakes, would look, uh, when they were down in that area, they was, it was a cooler area. Yeah, that's where they wanted to go, sure. And so that was where they wanted to go to. The crew did have the option that they could remove the snake themselves if they wanted to, or the other option was to uh, do the security violation. And then it became the uh, security police's job to uh, remove them. We're down at the entrance to the blast lock area here. This area that you're standing in outside, uh, it was thought that it would very likely crumble in if there was a nearby nuclear blast, say a mile and a half or so away. Uh, if the blast was bothered, this might survive, but at, at least the hardened areas would su survive. So it's possible, uh, even though this was built to good industrial standards, uh, it was expected that this uh, entry portal could collapse in. The uh, area behind me is the start of the uh, hardened areas. Uh, the, it was designed to withstand uh, 300 PSI. The, the hardened areas were designed to withstand 300 PSI of overpressure, basically the blast shock wave from the, a nearby nuclear device. Uh, the walls here are nearly four feet thick. Ceiling and floor is about five feet thick. The uh, uh, concrete here has three columns of rebar in it, ranging in size from my thumb to the size of a handrail. All welded together, not wire tied, and at closer centers than what uh, normally would be used in uh, concrete. The uh, Concrete itself was poured as a continuous pour to eliminate any voids, seams, or anything, uh, any weakness in the concrete. So uh, it would be, uh, once they started, they pour on the section, they would do the whole section before they uh, uh, 
stop the pour. Uh, another thing I want to point out is that the outside shell, uh, basically part of the form for the blast lock area and the other areas that we'll be in, is uh, covered with a quarter inch steel plate. Uh, the steel plate has been welded and it has been uh, grounded. You'll see ground straps various places where it's been tied to ground. And uh, this was to protect against the EMP pulse, the uh, electromagnetic uh, pulse that would occur from the nuclear blast. In today's world, the well, at, at that time, the uh, EMP pulse would have taken out the electronics of both the uh, launch system and also the uh, missile itself. Uh, in today's world, it take out the electric grid, it take out uh, all our cell phone systems, anything electronic, including your automobiles that uh, now depend upon computers. So just the effects of a, a nuclear EMP pulse could be devastating in today's world. The uh, other thing I want to point out here before we go on is the uh, this is the first of the uh, 6,000 pound steel doors. The doors are basically uh, welded I-beams with uh, high density concrete in between them. The uh, uh, doors actually were designed to provide a protection against 1,000 PSI of overpressure. Uh, once the door was closed, the hardened areas were pretty well protected uh, if you think that, think about it, that uh, five to seven PSI of overpressure would destroy a normal stick built home in a uh, hurricane or tornado situation, 12 to 13 PSI would take out most industrial buildings. So uh, this was designed to withstand a uh, very large blast wave. This door was interlocked with the next one behind me and the uh, other ones that will go through. Uh, only one of the doors could be opened at a time, and this uh, this door and the one behind me protected against a uh, outside explosion. The other two in the other uh, hallway or in the cableway, those protected against the crew from the missile itself. Please follow me.